Hello. Welcome to I Dream in Black and Gold on the Voluntary Virtues Network. My name is Joseph Eklund. And I recently gave a lecture at um, the Seeds of Change conference at my local uh, community college where I'm currently studying cybersecurity. I developed this talk um, for the lecture because a friend told me to do my thing at the lecture at the uh, conference and so I viewed this as also a way for me to in a sense come out of the closet um, as an anarcho-libertarian voluntarist and really show that you know with libertarianism libertarianism just deals with physical violence. How do we find a just way to deal with physical violence? And what would be unjust of using physical violence in defense? Um, because if somebody's, you know, giving you a weird look, they aren't physically aggressing against you, and it would be inappropriate to use physical violence against them in return. Because you'd actually be initiating that violence. And so... I looked at this as an excellent opportunity uh, to explore what is prejudice. You know, because there's racism and sexism and all these sort of isms. And yeah, they suck, but there's something more, more important and more specific. As Ayn Rand has said, the smallest minority is the individual. Individualism actually takes all these group uh, prejudices, gets rid of them all. You're looking at who is this person? What is their history? What is the reality of their life? And that makes sense to me. That is something where all the previous conceptions are wiped away in honor of the truth. And I think that that is a dream worth aspiring to, to the point where we don't judge each other, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, by the color of each other's skin, but by the content of our character. And so I hope this talk uh, is uh, thought-provoking and intriguing. And like I said, a lot of this stuff doesn't have anything to do with libertarianism. It's going uh, as far as aesthetic steps in uh, social uh, ease. So it's super exciting, super fun, and enjoy the, uh, the lecture. This is a lecture um, about thinking philosophically about prejudice, assumption. Um, you know, we might touch on actual knowledge and whether it actually happens, but mostly just trying to look at the different qualities of, of assumptions that we make in our lives. Now, this is far, part of the basis of philosophy. I have a quote uh, by the, basically the most uh, well-known in his time philosopher in the history of humankind because of the internet, uh, Stefan Molyneux who said that ideology is the opposite of philosophy. Philosophy is the curiosity which guides its inquiry according to universal principles. Ideology is a prior prejudice that seeks out an echo chamber of reaffirming information. Now, the reason I'm doing this lecture is uh, I'm, I'm a tutor at the Writing Center, uh, or yeah, up until in a couple weeks when the school year ends. And one of the organizers of this event uh, had a paper, and I was reading a paper with her, and it was about racism. And she sort of mentioned a little bit offhand that there were different types, different levels to racism. And it just got me thinking, well, 
what is that? What, what does that mean? Can we have clearly defined uh, empirical standards for these different things? Of course, there's different things to be prejudiced about, like racism, nationalism, uh, having certain assumptions based on gender, any of these things. A political letter next to your, uh, the, the little letter next to a politician's name. You can all make all sorts of prejudicial assumptions based on these sort of things. So I started thinking about it and I was thinking, we make assumptions in our lives. Our lives would not work without them. We could not work. We make assumptions that our senses actually function in giving us information. We, it's very reasonable. Where does it become prejudice? Where does it become stereotype? Where does it take a person and dehumanize them? I was thinking about this, and what I came to is, in a certain sense, in the motivation behind inquiry, there's a prioritizing. When we have a certain ideology or a certain understanding about the world, and we come up upon a new uh, piece of information coming to us through our senses, through our situation in the world, we have a conflict sometimes between our current understanding of the world and this new information. The reason we have science, the reason we have philosophy, is we figured out that it is in our long-term interest to make our current worldview a lower priority than the reality of the situation at hand, the truth, the, the complexity of the world. And this is really what I see as the difference between prejudice and a reasonable assumption. Is we use our understanding about the world and we use prior conceptions of, of a stereotype, of a class of, of idea about a person to rid ourselves of the responsibility to understand another person, to empathize with another human being, to challenge ourselves to understand what they think. People have assumptions and prejudice about different ideolo ideologies. People have prejudice about different religions. People have prejudice about um, different scientific theories in the commu science community. So how do we how do we navigate this? It's very difficult to tell from the outside the difference. And this, uh, I think that it's probably possible, but it's very difficult. And one of the things that um, we get to in these two types. So if I um, whatever, this hello thing is stupid. <laughs> we could almost sort of make a little thing where we have prejudice and I don't know what exactly to call it. I just called it a reasonable assumption. Now, what do we do with this? What do we do with, uh, with a, an assumption about people? Whether it be um, based out of this desire to, in a sense, protect ourselves from actually um, challenging our worldview. Or, um, or actually, in a sense, the assumptions, a reasonable assumption is something that we, you know, we do get a sense for them, but we don't say this is what they are. We say, okay, I do have certain things that I see, you know, they've dressed a certain way, 
I don't necessarily add a whole bunch of meaning on top of that to assume what they meant by dressing a certain way. If I have a Nazi outfit on, are you going to assume that I'm that I'm celebrating Hitler? You know, it's in a certain context, perhaps. But in other contexts, that would be it would just it'd be a way to dismiss me as a person and the complexity of my experience. Um, and, and it's a fine line. So what do we do with these assumptions? Well, uh, di different kinds of, you know, aggressions, uh, offenses. You know, we can have things that are outright, you know, criminal, like, uh, like violence, um, destruction of people's property, these sort of things. You're actually, in a sense, taking away physically their agency as a human being. If, you know, in, in a theory, in, in a lot of theories of, of liberty and property and these sort of things, we have um, human agency, human physical action divided into uh, three major categories. We have our current life, which is our liberty. You know, it's our ability to do what we want without hurting other people. And that is, you know, if, we, if somebody takes that away, they imprison us, they, they enslave us, they, you know, maybe take, put us under mind control. <laughs> Who knows? This, you could see um, the future of taking away someone's physicality, someone's physical agency, that's murder. You've taken their life. They're taking their future away. It's gone. And their past, we look at what they've done, their effect on the world, and, and we recognize that practically in, physical, in the physical world. We recognize that as property, their agency upon the world, how they've affected the world including action sometimes. If they've murdered someone, they, in a sense, own that action. So we can see different, I have some examples of how this could work, in how we could find an example of a prejudice and a reasonable assumption for something like murder. Um, I, I made it a little bit silly to make it a little bit light, so imagine you're Luke Skywalker, and you're on the moon of Endor, and you're crawling through the jungle, and there's a stormtrooper, and he's got his back to you, and he's got his gun in hand. If he hears you, it's a, it's a difficult situation. You can make a reasonable assumption that he is going to try and kill you. If he hears you, and you want to preserve your life, and you might take a, like an action that could be mistaken. Luke himself was dressed as a stormtrooper covertly for a while. So he could kill someone who was totally innocent. It could be, you know, a passerby who was trying to stay um, incognito because they were on the run from the stormtroopers. We don't have all the information all the time. And so we make reasonable assumptions, but if Luke has an attitude, and I hope he didn't, because he's sort of a nice hero for us to have, um, who, you know, uses the force for good, right? Um, I think psychic abilities should come up with some, some proper empathy. If he just says, anybody who dresses as a stormtrooper is looking for it. You know, they're a clone, they're not worth anything. They're, you know, they're less than human. Well. I might be getting into some cloudy territory, but this is a way to excuse oneself from having empathy, from understanding the situation better, from even just being open to possibilities. And just like with science, this causes us to have a lot of uh, potential uncertainty. But in the end, it is much better for us practically and 
for our level of certainty because we constantly challenge our uncertainties. Um, another level that I um, made was was being uh, vitriolic. I, I, so somebody who is vocally nasty, you know, they're not violating your physicality in a direct sense. They're violating perhaps your um, your neurobiology, uh, your your sense of your mirror neurons, all these sorts of things, but it's not that direct. And it's a, it's a different quality that we mostly recognize. You know, if, if somebody's, you know, saying, hey, you're an asshole, um, you don't, it would be disproportionate to punch them in the face. You know, we, we see it as a, as a qualitatively and proportionately different thing. And once again, Prejudice, reasonable assumption, prejudice. I mean, I, I don't think we really need to go into too many examples to sort of get the idea that somebody can basically make a, a, a prejudicial stereotype about you, you know, cuss you out, be mean to you actively. Um, they may actually have reasonable assumptions. They may actually mistake you for somebody else and think that you're somebody who actually kind of deserved it in a sense, that they were you know, a real, uh, a real criminal, a somebody who was nasty to them, they might be mistaken, or it could be a reasonable assumption that, and it's true. <laughs> I always sort of forget that we can make reasonable assumptions. You know, sometimes uh, our, our assumptions are actually right. You know, if, now I, I tend to, with the, uh, Vitriol, that's oh, a weird word. Yeah, that's the word I picked. <laughs> um, I, I have a hard t harder time with that because I'm just naturally, I, I don't like nastiness. I just, well, actually I do that. Um, so I'm going to do a minor um, stereotype test. I'm a libertarian anarchist. So, that is something, I'm a minority person in that respect, my ideology is in a minority. This tends to get all sorts of flags, right? Assumptions. So, ah, I'm getting a little bit uh, adrenaline, because um, I don't usually talk about it. So, <laughs> in this, I may have prejudice about a, a bureaucrat or something. And, and I, I try to be really, I try to do this one. <laughs> but it can also fall, fall into this um, caricaturization of people. Say, I'll see in my very own community people talking about cops in a vitriolic manner, in a prejudicial manner that's unjustified. Um, and at the same time, there are many times when it is when I would consider it justified, like murdering people without good reason. I, and I won't go into that because I don't have that much time. Now, a final one is ostracism. So. We don't talk to that person. We respect their rights. They can do what they want. Well, I'm not going to deal with them. And like I said, they might be a racist and they don't want to deal with it. They're closing themselves off from sensory input so they don't have to understand anything because they just want to be the way they are and they want to protect, protect themselves from actually understanding the world better. And I, I frankly, I consider it sad. Um, and they can have reasonable assumptions. Like, I've been around people that every time I'm around them, they, <laughs> they're vitriolic toward me. And I do my best 
to, and I sometimes assume reasonably that the next time I see them, they're going to be the same way. I don't know that. Maybe they've changed. Maybe they went through therapy. <laughs> um, and so then, I mean, we're all human. We need to understand that we're human. And we need to learn to have empathy for one another. Now, and what does that look like? So, one of the things about, especially um, criminal justice, that I have a critique about, is that there isn't a sense of proportion most often, or very often, and it seems to be aiming at a certain a kind of different way of treating people. We have this punitive style of imprisoning people. And there are certain levels to that, you know, protecting people from society. Um, but I, like I said, I'm a libertarian anarchist. I have a lot of laws that I don't like. <laughs> um, now, for as far as real criminality, things that are violent, things where there is a victim. It's not just a society thing that we don't like, but there are victims. And, and specifically in the criminal sense, uh, physical victims. There, why do we react in a proportional way in kind? You know, when, when somebody's being physically violent towards you, you would protect yourself violently. That's very appropriate. And in a certain sense, actually my friend Austin uh, brought this to me, in applying a proportional response, you are teaching them empathy in the kind that they are looking for. They have brought, they have brought into your relationship this, this thing, it's okay to, to be physically violent, at least to this degree. And you're teaching them what it's like. Um, same thing with, with being vitriolic. Now, I look at this as a maximal. I don't think it's appropriate if somebody's being nasty towards you to, you know, knife them, you know, like, <laughs> it's the same thing if somebody ostracizes you, I don't think it's really appropriate or effective. And that's a whole other argument that, I, that I'm interested in pursuing further. But ostracizing, if they're ostracizing you, do you get to go up to them and be nasty to them? Well, for one, it's not going to help anything. They will get more defensive, more locked into their, into their world. Empathy is what helps people reach out of their world. It's when people actually see, recognize each other as human beings. And one of the worst things for that is tribalism, is saying my group is different. Now, culture, we can recognize culture as, as, as different, especially because I love diversity. The whole point of the earth is that we're all different and we can all choose. Well, with it, I mean, we have certain inheritance and we can choose that, we can rebel against that. <laughs> I feel like I'm going a little bit into a minefield a little bit sometimes. But that, I lost my train of thought. Help me. Culture. Culture. It doesn't mean that you need to step up just because somebody's brought a certain level to you doesn't mean you have to step up a level higher. Yeah, it would be disproportionate and it would actually, in a sense, in a certain sense, make you less. Because then you're um, being the aggressive one disproportionately. And I find that to be the subhuman trait. The whole point of human beings and a civilized society is that we come to ways to be tolerant with one another, be peaceful with another, one another, be different, yet be understanding. And, you know, What's that 
we're all individuals, we all have communities. How can we find ways to be ourselves and relate to people that we love and be tolerant of people who are tolerant of us? Now, as far as strategies for dealing with these, I don't claim that there's one answer. Everyone is a little bit different. Um, if somebody was abused as a child a lot, they have a lot of stuff to go through. If somebody's a physically, like, a psychopath, perhaps they just need, we just need to get rid of them, but they're different. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution. And I guess, are there any pressing questions? Could you go into a little bit more of the difference between tribalism and culturalism? Ooh, yeah, I, and I didn't really think about this uh, too much, but basically using cultural differences to create barriers. It's a similar thing. It's like we can be different as individuals, but if we use our differences to dehumanize. So that person's French, they must be like this. And therefore, I will not associate with them because blah, blah, blah. I, I actually don't have much uh, like cultural heritage pride, interestingly. I'm Swedish and German and Irish and all these sorts of things. I actually think that having I, my cultural pride is actually from the region I'm from. Having, I'm from uh, rural Wisconsin. And it's actually more about the land than the people almost. Does that make me divisive against other people? No. We're unique and we should, and we, and it's awesome. So, I don't know. Let's see. I think that's it. I, I have a uh, vodcast I'm starting on the Voluntary Virtues Network, and it is called I Dream in Black and Gold. And it is about moral philosophy and different ways that we can find solutions, thank you, to these different uh, problems, both, you know, with violence, with uh, child abuse, um, cultural differences that divide us, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed my. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Got some thoughts, uh, some gears stirring around in the noggin. Um, please. Uh, subscribe to the Voluntary Virtues Network. Watch some of the other shows. They're really great. Uh, some of the, de the debate that happened recently was very interesting. Um, all sorts of wonderful content here. And, you know, investi investigate some of these ideas. Voluntarism, the non-aggression principle. And, you know, let's try to be nicer to one another, but be truthful.